everyone, and welcome to another episode of Getting Hammered. I am your host, Mary Catherine Ham. I'm here with my co-host, back from vacay, Vic Mattis of the Washington Free Beacon. It has been a totally uneventful week while we've been out of town, so we're excited to touch back with you guys about, you know, the nothing that's been happening. Uh, but before we do all of that, how's it going, Hello, Vic? Mary Catherine. Uh, going well. I was looking forward to this week because that is, as I was just mentioning, the deadest week. Oh, yeah. Of uh, <laughs> and something's the goodest week, really, of 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 the, our of our year because it's you know no news happens. It's Fourth of July. Everybody goes home, and yet, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in Casting, Maine, which is on Penobscot Bay. Oh my gosh! Uh, my you. son and I uh, visited uh, a dear friend of ours, Jill Eastland, whose late husband was the great Terry Eastland. Oh, I'm so glad um, you got to see her. Yes, and uh, uh, her daughter and son and the grandkids. Uh, lovely. One of the things that we did when we were up there is we went down to Deer Isle and then further down to Stonington, and there is, for the kids, um, a touch tank. It's called the Discovery Wharf, and, you know, interactive, mm. so you could pick up lobsters, and they have the, the rubber bands and things like so it's all safe. But while we were there, the guide was a really large fella, like, you know, like, you know, like suspenders needed fella. Okay. Because, you know, the belly hangs down. Okay. And real sort of like sun wrinkled, grizzled, you know, from spending a lot of time at sea. As yeah. They, as they are, as they do. Uh, a true Mainer. And then he began to explain about the do's and don'ts of when you're at sea here uh, in that area and in general. Uh, what they do, lobster, lobstering, scallops, things mm-hmm. of that nature. Uh, at which point, you know, he's going on and on, but the kids then they start looking at the touch tank and get distracted. I was there and I was so transfixed by his lecture, let's call it a lecture, mm-hmm. uh, that it was it was all about, well, you don't want to wear, you want, you don't want to go barefoot in these waters because if you step on barnacles, uh, the water is like 50 degrees. So when you step on them, they can slice into you and you won't even know it. Oh, how nice. Until you come out. And believe it or not, barnacles, they can cause obviously infections and make your feet swell up when they tear into you. And barnacles can grow on flesh. Oh, come on. So, uh, and okay, that was the first one. The second one. <laughs> Wait, your kids totally should have been listening to this because it's like no. gross out body no. horror. Right. So the, the, the second one, my was kids about, would be like, the second oh. one was about sea urchins, right? And I love sea urchin at a sushi restaurant, right? The, yeah. as, as Chris Caldwell when you're the once apex predator, it, you yes. love the urchin. Yes, yes. Uh, as Chris Caldwell calls oh. it, the foie gras of the deep. You know, it tastes like the ocean. It's very exciting, but the outside, the spines, the spines of the uh, sea urchin. Yes, Jennifer, the spines of the sea urchin are venomous. And they have like, it's like almost tiny little fish hooks so they go on you, the spines, they go in you and you try to remove it, but they'll just break off. And then he says, and then the only way to get it out, meanwhile, your hand swells up like a catch's mitt and then you got to get a doctor to just open up your hand and remove it. And then after that, he says, Portuguese. Welcome to Maine. Welcome to Maine. Also Portuguese man of words. Do you know what happens, kids, when the tentacles go in your eyes? I'm like, (laughs) you go blind for six months. And you yeah. could have gone to the southeast for shark attacks, but you went no, I to the went, northeast, I so went, this is what I you went got. to Maine, and this is what I learned. And you know what it was like? It was so terrifying. It w- I thought about this. It was like the marine biology version of Scared Straight. <laughs> and I thought of our friend, uh, Sonny Bunch, mm-hmm. who, you know, we tease him because he doesn't like to go outdoors in general, camping and whatnot. And right. all I thought is, and he hates the beach, he's never going out if he hears this. Oh, never. I mean, that's he's never going to leave the house. No, that's it. But other than that, it was lovely. And it was lovely to see our friends. Mary, did you get to eat some urchins I, as, I, no, as revenge for this had, threat to your um, well-being? I LDI lobster shack. I had a lobster roll there Love in it. Deer Love Isle. It. And then uh, there was a place in Bucksport uh, called uh, Crosby's uh, Drive-In. And I had a clam basket. It was so good. Oh. I'm such a sucker for clams. So, uh, But here's the funny thing. Uh it's like that part of the state, mm-hmm. the regional specialties, right? It's you see these little shacks and it's, you know, it's clam and it's lobster, a lot of lobster, obviously, haddock, uh, fresh farm stuff. Coming from D.C. Uh, in the D.C. area, uh, I was surprised there were very few uh, Mexican restaurants or anything from south of the border, right. shall we say. 
So there's one place called LL Frijoles. Okay. And it was fantastic. But they must be, you know, loving it because it's like the one place the where one they can place. go for really good, authentic Mexican. So shout out to LL Frijoles, which is wonderful. Um, didn't see, and also having been raised in New Jersey, didn't see a single Italian or a pizza place. I'm sure they're out there, obviously, Somewhere. if you go out to Bar Harbor or wherever. But when in all my driving around that area, you know, I'm used to seeing it every other block. Not, I'm just, uh, not this place. So very interesting. Mary Catherine, how was your fourth? Oh, it was great. We were down at the lake. We had huge extended family gathering. People packed oh, into nice. every room. Yes, of course. Both sets of grandparents there. Ooh. Yeah, good times. All the cousins. Um all the kids went on the tube, except for baby. The baby did not go on the tube, but the toddler went on the tube. The baby would have gone on the tube. We have the sitting up kind. Yes. Right? Yeah, so it's yeah. not, it can be very gentle. Uh, yeah. And I would Depending have, on who's piloting. Yeah, yes. I would, have, I would have taken the baby on the tube. That doesn't bother me in that particular situation. Uh, but we just didn't fit that in. But the toddler did get to go. She loved it. Wow. Uh, they drove their little, they have a little um, ATV type vehicle, the babies. The oh kids, the bigger kids drive it too. So it's actually like battery motor yes. powered. Thing. So the big kids actually drive it. The babies do not. I did not realize it has a remote control. My husband just bought himself the biggest remote control car he could buy <laughs> is essentially what happened. And he drives the little kids all up and down the lawn and they have the time of their lives. They're just like, Whoa! it's a self-driving car. It is. It is. It's, it's the Tesla, the Tesla of, of, kid of cars. baby cars. Um, anyway, so they oh, had a great, great. time. Uh, you, you were talking about being outdoorsy and, and sunny. I, I, despite being an outdoorsy person, I feel like, and I'll, I guess I'll knock on wood. Here, we have this wood panel yeah, uh, TV right here. We do. Uh, do not, have not come in for a ton of bee stings in my life. Mm -hmm. And yet yeah. I was stung the other day, packing um, up at the lake, somehow got stung Right on my sternum, and it Ooh. hurt. It's like the third time in my life. Was Can you believe that record? Was it a bumblebee? A I didn't bumblebee, see what it yellow was. Yellow jacket thing. I Bad. didn't, I didn't no. know until it hurt. Okay, uh, it yeah. is It is sort of annoying several days later, which reminds me of the other time I got hit by a yellow jacket. That was in defense of my children, by the way. Well, I was very for, brave. You took one for the team. I was very yeah. brave. I was trying to block them from the yellow jackets, and the yellow jackets got me two at a time. Um, You're like anyway. Macaulay Culkin. Sorry. If you know, you know. <laughs> so sad. That's right. Uh, We're not talking about Home Alone either. Okay. But on this vacation, something happened that was very not relaxing, which is that my toddler figured out how to climb out of the pack and play. It happened. Yeah. So here we are. It's a great achievement. And yet. Yes. Okay. So we had a plan, though. And I'll, I'll put it forth to you guys uh, about what I should do about this in the future. And you guys can send me advice. Um, this is the first kid I've ever had crawl out of a crib. The other two did not. Uh, they were very compliant. Yeah, complacency. Yeah. I didn't I'm even, all for complacency. I didn't even have a kid who climbed out of bed for a long wow. time. I'd put them in a bed and they'd be like, yeah, we're good until you open the door, I guess. Like, that's crazy. Impressive. Um, so this one I knew was going to get out of hand. She's, she's a wild card. So she starts climbing out of the pack and play on this trip. Understandable. We're in a weird place. Uh -huh. She's like, it's a different crib, so she, it's a little more easy, uh -huh. has more purchase for climbing, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, so what we did is we set up a baby monitor, and the baby monitor has uh, a microphone on it. And then we'd put her to so sleep a, yeah. and then watch the baby monitor until the second she starts climbing and go, you can pick up the crib right now, lay down. So a uh, disembodied voice. Yeah. So she looks over at the sink like, what's happening? Crazy. Why is the sink yelling at me? Yeah. She's in a little room with a little kitchenette. It's like the voice it, of God. It did work. She was like, ooh. You can see her eyes go, uh-huh. Okay, I'm going to lay down. But if you're not vigilant uh -huh. and if you don't catch it, uh -huh. she's out of there. Because if the voice doesn't chime in, she's jumping out. And at one point, she did let herself out of the whole house. Because she knows how to do yeah. that. So my first night of sleep mm -hmm. on this vacation was not great Uneasy. because I was concerned about escape. Yes. Uh, and I've never had a kid do that before. But I thought, all will be well, Vic. We'll get back home mm -hmm. and she won't climb out of her crib. First nap, out of the crib, upstairs in the hallway, yelling down the stairs. You know what? 
she's like the velociraptor. They 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 learn, you know. They, they, she you know. learns. Yeah. So this time, I reasoned. Uh, problem that, solvers. Yeah. yeah. So n- maybe not just the voice, uh-huh. uh, because if she's letting herself out of the room, we got a problem. Yeah. Uh, we have a baby gate at the top of the stairs. I installed the uh, childproofing handles on the door, so she hopefully can't open her her room handle or I hate those even yeah. I have a problem with them <laughs> they're terrible yeah but she's like, very it's just smart going she, in circles she's gonna figure this out in like a week yeah. but anyway I installed those there's a baby gate at the top of the steps so I've got at least got okay. her contained to like the hallway uh-huh. if she gets out uh-huh. um but the first night what I did is I first of all I took her to the park like three times in the pool to in a hundred degree out, weather so that she would be sure. so tired yeah. yeah I put her down and I said we're done climbing for today wasn't it fun when we climbed at the park, the proper place yeah. for climbing? Because climbing is now over. And then and then I said, okay, well, it's time for night-night. And I went and I laid in wait in the hallway because my plan is, and it remains my plan, the second she jumps out of that crib and into the hallway, I scare the crap out of her. In, in what way? <laughs> Just like, Just by- oh, you cannot be out here. <laughs> You're turning into like the high school chaperone on the class trip. You just gonna plant yourself in the hall, wait for the kid to open the door, get back in there. Yes, but like much louder than that because she can't be reasoned with. Uh, she can't be reasoned with. Yeah. Um, I tired her off out enough okay. three separate times now that she's gone to it sleep. Hasn't happened. It hasn't happened yet. Right. But I will continue to sit there at the top of the stairs, yeah. lest she escape, so that I can give her, give her a little. little so scare. you you've had no kid, just like. You've never had that uh, situation where you wake up in the morning, they're standing right over you? Uh, no, yeah. not in any situation that was yeah. like our normal sleeping yeah. situation. Out at vacation and stuff occasionally, uh, but yeah. no. Yeah, that's that's always kind it's of... It's horrifying. It's happened, I think, two times. Yeah, and usually they're not, they're just staring at you. Yeah. And it's like the omen, you know? <laughs> anyway. So good like, luck uh. to me. If you guys have tips, mm-hmm. if you think I'm terrible for uh lying in wait to scare my daughter fine but uh i think it's i think it's for the best you're doing what you it's gotta, a long-term you, safety play you're doing what it's you gotta not, do that's right okay that's right plus i gotta sleep man yeah i'm not like these other people with kids whose kids don't sleep Mm-mm. you need they sleep they, and i sleep nice. that's the that's, that's the very... situation we have in our house anyway perfect all right speaking of people who won't listen to reason oh uh, boy here we go should we talk about the president let's do it Okay, so much has been happening, so very much. The last time we uh, did a show with my friend uh, Lauren Stewart, at L.A. Stewart says, you can follow her on Twitter, um, it was pre-Stephanopoulos interview. Yes. So I guess I should just play maybe a little bit from that to kick us off. We're going to do a bunch of clips because I got them all pulled up. Here's uh, President Biden. This is the Friday after the debate. So it's what? It's more than a week after more the debate, than, yeah. Correct? So it's like eight days, but it should. Uh, uh, this was going to be the plan was mm-hmm. they were taping it, I think on Friday, and it was going to be released on Sunday, big, uh, you know, talk show Sunday, right? Um, and instead, it just came out Friday night special. Yeah, fr- which is an interesting thing because we talk about the Friday night news dump, but this well, was this is this Friday was night Friday big. night at eight p.m. Yeah. The day after July 4th is the yeah. biggest Friday night news dump there is. Yeah. However, of course, people paid some attention and saw it online later because... Yeah. That's the thing. Social media has made all the difference yeah. in this. All right. So here's here's just a little clip. Did you ever watch the debate afterwards? I don't think I did, no. Well, what, I'm trying, what I want to get at is what were you experiencing as you were going through the debate? Did you know how badly it was going? Yeah, look... The whole way I prepared, nobody's fault of mine. Nobody's fault of mine. I, uh, I prepared what I usually would do, sitting down, as I did come back with foreign leaders or the National Security Council, for explicit detail. And I realized about partway through that, you know, all the, I get quoted, the New York Times had me down at 10 points before the debate, nine now or whatever the hell it is. The fact of the matter is that what I looked at is that he also lied 28 times. I couldn't, I mean, the way the debate ran, not my fault, no one else's fault, no one else's fault. But it seemed like you were having trouble from the first question in, even before he spoke. 
well, I just had a bad night. His presence was a lie. That's what Biden was going to say. Even before Trump even opened his mouth, just his very being there was a lie. I think what struck all of us about the debate is how prepared the president was with specific facts. That it sounded like he was Well, he had so much information. It was coming out of his ears. And Mm -hmm. then he just overprepared. Just sounded like he was at a National Security Council meeting. That's what it sounded like to me. Uh, Uh, By the way, that's a great Led Zeppelin song, Nobody's Fault But Mine. Must have been thinking about it. (laughs) Yeah, I, I do. Also, he uses the word, or whatever the hell. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Sides where he fine. just casually cusses on yeah. TV, like no big deal. Yeah, I'm waiting for the casual, uh, you know, dropping of the f bomb without him realizing it too. That that, that could be next. You know, everybody's gonna get an FCC yeah. fine. Can he pardon those? Yeah. Mr. President, I've never seen a president at 36 percent approval get reelected. Well, I don't believe that's my approval. Right? That's not what our polls show. And if you stay in and Trump is elected and everything you're warning about comes to pass, how will you feel in January? I feel as long as I gave it my all and I did the goodest job as I know I can do. That's what this is about. It's about the old college try, Mary Catherine. The threat to democracy, as long as he tried his best. He's going to give it his goodest shot. His goodest shot. Uh, This was obviously not reassuring. We're like many light years past that news cycle at this point, but I just wanted to... That's that's the bar that we set coming out of the debate. The interesting thing to me is he's supposed to do a uh, press conference later this week. And what they're doing, I think smartly, actually, maybe it's the only thing that's smart about the Biden campaign campaign in White House, is that they're slow walking these appearances so that you buy a week every time yeah. you're going to do an appearance. Right. That's so. Right. The first week, they're like, oh, we're going to do this sit down with George Mm -hmm. Sutton, but not till next Friday. Right. Right. And then he does. Not disastrously enough to send all the rats off the ship, which is a bad situation for them. And then they say, it's cool. We're going to do a press conference next Thursday. By the time you get to next Thursday, the clock is running on this thing. If y'all have any chance of doing anything, I said a week ago, more than a week ago now on Fox News Sunday. They, they need unanimity of purpose and a plan, and they need it quick. We are now a week and a half out, and it is nowhere to be seen. So no. inertia wins Yeah, if he keeps running the clock. That's right. It's weird to say time is on his side because it's not in many other ways. Uh, but the, but that, well, he and Father Time are quite close. Yeah, they so, are. Uh, and, and I believe it was even David Axelrod who made the reference to Father Time. You know, he waits for no one. Uh so next week, as you know, is the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. So the news will shift again. Yes. And there's almost a general, I think, expectation that there's not going to be news coming from the left because everybody's going to be focused on the right. And they're certainly going to be focused on Donald Trump as the promised threat to democracy that they've been telling everybody all this time and what crazy things he's going to say. And also, he has to, at that point, uh, announce who his running mate is. So this news, Trump has been... Trump has done something that I never thought possible. I know. He is exercising restraint. And he didn't step on his story. And he didn't want to become the story. And usually uh, it's happened when some great policy accomplishment has happened under Trump. And then he'll say, wait, I'm going to do something crazy now. So we don't talk insane. about the tax cuts. Let's going to talk about this or USMCA or whatever it is. So he's sitting by and large seeing this one out. I know he had the interview with Sean Hannity the other day. Uh, and he's been uh, doing some other events, but by and large, he's just letting the um, the Biden campaign and the Democrats just have this meltdown. Uh, and it's obviously worked to his advantage. Let me say this, Mary Catherine. If uh, we know that there's this intervention that is happening, Democrats meeting behind closed doors, members of Congress, if I were spinning for the Biden administration. Mm-hmm. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, number one, the polls really have not moved that much. If you look at the grand scheme right now, right now, if you capture it, either you say that the polls, you know, uh, underestimate me because remember the red wave, right. the red wave that was promised 22, 22 didn't happen. Therefore, anything can happen. That's one of Biden's retorts is like, you guys yeah, have been wrong. Right. about and and we're wrong. People were wrong about 2022. Right. Uh, I think right now the general generic Trump lead over Biden the real clear average maybe is 3.3. There uh, was an interesting, you can cherry pick polls. One of the ones that came out was a Bloomberg poll. Yes, and the it Bloomberg showed, tracking in the battlegrounds. Yes, and the battlefield. And Biden was up in Michigan, 
and Wisconsin. I also believe he was down in Pennsylvania in that poll. He so was. Like, oh, there's some margin red, of error. Red flags mm-hmm. all over the place. When he's when he's up, you say he's up, and when yeah. he's down, it's margin of error. Right. So <laughs> that's it. And then when the polls shift, do not talk about the polls, but just say that these things will fluctuate. He's fine, and there's obviously a sizable chunk of supporters who think that Biden is completely uh, fine versus the the orange menace. Well, and my. My theory of the state of play has been, A, you need to get together quickly on something. They have not done that. And B, that Biden is so dedicated to sticking with his Mm -hmm. position uh, that the polls can't shift enough to make him feel as if they are catastrophic for him. Uh, there's another clip from Stephanopoulos where he says that the Lord Almighty would have to tell him to get out of that spot. And so a two point poll shift ain't going to do it for President Joe Biden to become not President Joe Biden. Right. Uh, his motivation is is not there for that. Uh, but the universe of voters that can be moved from Biden to Trump is relatively small. Yeah. It's relatively small. So the, the numbers aren't going to change that much particularly in national polling, which he can hold on to, maybe in battlegrounds, a little bit mm-hmm. worse for him. The universe, however, of Democratic voters who you can demoralize, huge, <laughs> perhaps unlimited. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a problem for them. But I think I think you're right that the way this is moving, the less likely it is that he steps down. Right. Because who, who makes him? Again, I've said this before. Who, who makes him do it? Right. That's right. It would be his wife or his son, Hunter. Yeah. And I think they're going to say, no, you can stick it out. They've had it in for us for all this time. And this is something that we've been trying to get since 1988 when you accidentally read the wrong script. By the way. By Neil Kinnock. By the way, we have yeah. we have uh, two presidents in a row uh, where, look, uh, two presidents in a row where the, the deep well of insecurities that both of them yeah. carry yeah. around Arbor. have yeah. been not even solved by becoming the president of the United States of America. Right. Like of all the things that you could look look at your life and be like, I've made I've made it. I've made it. I'm not mad at the haters anymore. Yeah. I did it. But no. both of them I are gotta like, do it again. Nah. No, and, and in particular the haters. I mean it was obviously predictable that Trump was gonna run for re election. But Biden, there was that tacit understanding that um he was the bridge. Yeah, he called himself to a, a bridge. Future generation and he looked in the mirror and the future generation was him. So, I mean, that throws people off. I think that when uh, Biden supporters look back on what was the big mistake of this campaign, it was agreeing to a campaign. I mean, not a campaign, excuse me. Yeah. That was a Freudian slip. I mean, agreeing to the um, debate. Yeah. Agreeing to the debate. Sorry, I'm thinking about the campaign. Well, no, but by because if they didn't have a debate, they could have continued hiding this. Well, let me say, what they should have done is agreed to an actual campaign in the primaries. That yeah. was their shot. Right. And this is the but they locked it the up thing, quick. This is the thing I find now frustrating. It's apparently not locked up. Yeah, this is the thing I find frustrating about the left's take on this. Is like there's a lot of cope that says, "Look at us, we're having a healthy yeah. discussion." Unlike you guys. Unlike you guys on the right who have this orange menace right. and Lemmings. you, nobody's saying he should drop out of the race. Okay, Trump was not my choice. I argued against him as mm-hmm. I have. Since 2015. But there was a competitive democratic process in a primary through which primary voters made their wishes known. Right. Uh, We were basically on the right in the same position as Democratic voters, which is you have sort of an incumbent president who is the presumptive nominee and head of your party who you're going to have to challenge if you want to change things. And our party tried to do that. Now, they can argue that it should have happened long ago, blah, blah, blah. It's ha- By the way, it's happened twice in 2016 right. and now. Um, you guys on the left prevented that from happening, thereby shielding Biden from this moment until now, which is why you're in the technical term pickle that you are in. Yes. Um, I have so many thoughts on this, and I'm not even sure to work again. So I'll tell you this. Hold on. Oh, let's, yeah, let's, let's toss in another clip here. Okay. Speaking, uh, this is the voice of a new generation of voters, Joe Biden. Calling in to Morning Joe, yes. which is his favorite favorite morning show, 
Uh, if that a... reminds you of someone, it should yeah. because he's just on a telephone. Mm -hmm. He's not on camera. He's not in studio. Uh, Trump used to call into Fox and Friends, his favorite and morning, morning show. Joe. <laughs> morning Joe. Yeah, they were, they were, they were the... close. They were close. Before they the, loved him. Before the turn They've was been made. Been the um, And so he calls in. He gets loud and uh, and and uh, belligerent. Yeah. Uh, he talks about his crowd sizes. He denies the polls yeah. that uh, that say he's Such not a doing well. Familiar ring to it. Mm. And he's orange. He to get a tan. Look, I'll, I'll speak up in defense of this tan. I also got a tan before I went on vacation, so have at it, guys. You should get a tan. Brown, okay, brown. In but fact, orange is very. Is, there's only one person that we think of when we I see know. the orange. Actually, one of my my kids. Uh, critique of joe biden is always that he needs he needs a fake tan yeah. too so he took he they might be right i think they're right okay here he is calling in the american public is not going to move away from me as the average voter and again i'm here for two reasons pal one to rebuild the economy for hard work and middle class people give everybody a shot it's a straight shot everybody gets a fair chance number one Number two, remember all this talk about how I don't have the black support? Come on, give me a break. Come with me. Watch. Watch. I'm getting so frustrated by, by the elites. Now, I'm not talking about you guys, but about the elites in the party who they know so much more. But if any of these guys yeah. don't think I should yeah. run against me, go ahead, announce for, announce for president. Challenge me in the convention. Announce for president. Yeah, again, they were blocked out of having a real competitive primary. Uh, hats off. By the way, to Dean Phillips, who did run yeah. against Biden, making this argument the he whole time. He made this pretty, yeah. And he, he has been this. so vindicated, and it will do nothing for him because uh, the Mikas of the world will get yeah. continued, uh, yeah, like huge jobs and huge speeches, right. and the Dean Phillipses of the world who were correct yeah. will get nothing. The uh, the interesting thing is he says the media elites. Mm -hmm. uh, Biden says, and he goes, "Not you guys," but of course, Joe Scarborough was uh, the one who had. Initially, had defended Biden and his mental acuity, and yes. and was he said, this like is the best bleep Joe you, Biden, right? And bleep you or whatever, because it's the best Joe Biden. It's thoughtful, he's you know he, he's he's very composed. He thinks carefully before he speaks. That's the style, and I know him so well. And then after the debate, uh, Scarborough makes the reference to uh, if this if he were a CEO on a board, would they have kept him after a night like that? And so, not quite. Also, uh, Biden does mention at some point in that uh, call-in uh, that he was reading. So that, you know, he's reading oh, yeah, from a, yeah. a, a, you know, a script. That he was so that they'll ask him a few questions and then he can answer and then somehow get back to the script and then say, and you can no. tell that he's reading. So they, they had to answer questions about that at the press. You can, the, you can, at the you press can also tell, like when Trump's on Hannity, that he's not reading. You know? yeah. <laughs> but, it, sure. but it works both ways. Um, by the way, you know what that sounds like to me? You could You could also hear the pages yeah, flipping yeah while he's on right. the phone because he's clearly on speaker barking at the phone you know what it sounded to me like both both in uh uh belligerent nature and uh sound quality is it's as if you're standing on the, you're the pizza guy on the other side of the door in home alone <laughs> listening to angels with filthy souls yeah filthy animals okay. like he said hey pal you know i'm here right <laughs> okay i, Do you I know? don't remember that from home alone one yes I don't remember that he at knows all. what i'm talking about mm -hmm. yes okay. we're our talking in, about our internet Edwin interest... carlson who's sitting in on today's recording so when uh macaulay culkin yeah. kevin McAllister, uh uses a vhs tape oh, of an old yes, movie yes, that he's yes. not supposed to be watching right. yeah. to talk to and scare the pizza guy outside the door uh -huh. he uses why is he scaring the... i thought he's scaring joe pesci and he wants Daniel to, i think because he wants to oh he uses it for that too yeah okay that one you've ruined my joke oh <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going by the pizza guy. I don't know Every, what's happening everybody here. Everybody rewatch Home Alone. Okay. The pizza guy's there and gets scared. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Uh, Mary Catherine. Um, <laughs> you can uh, cut that out, Jennifer. No, keep too. it in. Keep it in. <laughs> it's it's good content. The. Uh, we were talking about him having to buy time, right? And next week, we mentioned the Republican convention. After that, it's just a few more weeks. The Democratic convention doesn't begin, I think, until August 19. Yeah. Uh, and the Olympics but, are in there. And the Olympics are in there in Paris. Prior to that, however, uh, the Democrats have announced, the DNC has announced, they're going to conduct a virtual roll call 
so that they can get Biden on the ballot in Ohio. Oh, yeah. So even before August 19, so let's assume it's the week before. It has to be 90 days, according to the Ohio rule, before Election Day that to, to get your name on uh, to be the nominee. So, and it's very late this year, obviously, for the convention, and little did they know the implications right. for it. But so we are talking about maybe like three, mid, four weeks. Yeah, if they can hang on. Mid-August deadline. If they yeah. can hang on. I think then they that's can. it. They'll, then they'll I think they in. can. I think they can too, right. barring anything. Uh, despite this, which is Jake Tapper reading a verbatim quote oh from the Morning Joe interview. In reality, 72% of voters say that they believe President Biden is too old. That's according to CNN's most recent polling. Voters have been saying this for quite a long time. The reality is that the Democratic elites are mostly late to acknowledge these age and ability issues compared to the rest of the public. The elites have been forced to reckon with it after the debate just 11 days ago. Look at my career. I've not had many of those nights. It was a terrible night, and I, I, I really regret it happened. But the fact of the matter is, mm-hmm. how, how can you assure you're going to be on, on you know, faith that can intervene on your way to go to you know, work tomorrow? Age, age wasn't, you know, the idea, I'm too old. The fact of the matter is, how can you assure you're going to be out on, you know, on your way to go, you know, work tomorrow? Age, age wasn't, you know, the idea that I'm too old. Keep in mind, that soundbite is supposed to be reassuring to those Democratic supporters who have gone wobbly. Many Democratic officials with whom I've spoken are worried that President Biden and his family and his inner circle appear to be in complete denial, not just about whatever might be wrong with him, but the state of his candidacy right now. Mary Catherine, why are are they so mean? Ouch! They're not supposed to be mean to the Democrat like that. What is happening here? Well, that is one thing that they're dealing with anew. Yes. Right? Uh, And look, KJP wasn't stellar before this began. Oh, man. But now uh, we got her in there uh, hostile, arguing with Ed O'Keefe about this report. Right. Ed that... O'Keefe of CBS News. So Ed O'Keefe of CBS News, uh, there was there was news broken earlier in the week about how a doctor who is a Parkinson's specialist mm-hmm. was on the visitor logs that someone finally got a hold yeah. of for having visited. By yeah. the way, notice there, um, we've been told in the past, there are no visitor logs when he's elsewhere. Yeah, no visitor okay. logs in Wilmington. So he spends four days a week in Rehoboth or Wilmington. Yeah. Uh, but a we have no time. visitor logs from there. Nonetheless, someone spotted that this doctor had been on the list at right. the White House and that he's a Parkinson's That's specialist. Right. And there, the press is asking KJP to confirm or deny this. Mm. Can we explain why he's there? And she's big mad about it. Uh, confirm the name. Can yeah. you confirm whether or not the president has seen this Parkinson's specialist? Um, and you mentioned yeah. three times that the visitor logs show a duration of eight visits over eight months. I think that is the crux of the question. But, I, but I also said, I also said there are thousands of military personnel that come to the White House and they are under the care of the medical unit. They are. So can you con- He's not being disrespectful. And so she has so much respect for the press, I'm sure. But he's you know. this is her. She does this a lot where she gets all, oh, very sanctimonious about how she's being treated. Mm-hmm. There are many rhetorical tricks you can use. And one of them is like, hey, no need to get defensive. If you ever get that one, that wins every time, by the way. <laughs> Here she goes. Let's hear a little more uh-huh. about this. this disrespect of being asked the same question several times that you won't answer. Um, that the Parkinson's visits, specialist visits were for the president? I, not? What I can tell you is that the president has seen a neurologist three times, and I read to you what the neurologist has said, and I read to you the last the last line, I could say it again, uh, no findings which would be consistent with any cerebellar or other central neurolog- neurological disorders such as stroke, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, or ascending lateral sclerosis. That is from, that is from February. That is coming from February. That is what the medical unit, the, the president's doctor, shared. And I share, I said to you, it's happened three times. Each time there is a physical that occurs and we put out a comprehensive report, that is when he has been able uh, to, see, uh, to see a specialist. So that's what I can share. Question on It goes on, by the way, and he, she's still, he's still after her because yeah. she's not answering the question. Right. And, uh, and she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he's like, well, we're all a little miffed in here right. about 
how information has not been passed to Feeling us properly. Feeling misled. <laughs> and kept in the dark. I do wonder. Uh, look, I love to see an energetic press corps suddenly holding uh, feet to the fire right. during a Democratic uh, presidency. Mm -hmm. uh, but do not be mistaken. They are doing it because they're afraid he's going to lose yes. to Donald Trump. I was just about and to say they that. are seeing the window close also right to this. Ha now, there's a little bit of professional embarrassment because they largely went along with mm -hmm. this fib, mm -hmm. which, as Jake Tapper notes, 70 percent of Americans saw through. Right. Uh, so they're a li they're a little mad at the White House about that. But I think they're mostly concerned that he's going to lose to Joe Biden. That's this right. is not a moral issue. Uh, Mary Catherine, we talked about this, I think. Just lose after to Donald debate. Trump. Next... I misspoke. Just like look, what did you my say? brain's just like Joe Biden's. <laughs> That's fine. I missed it too. Like Biden. Uh, the uh, right after the debate, we had uh, that special uh, morning podcast, and um, we were we were talking about this, and you, I said that half the half the left, including the media, was surprised, and I think you said that they were living in denial, and I yeah, think that's like... both. Half denial, and then, half confirmation bias. Right. Like, and then the other half is complicit. They know stuff. They're sitting on stuff. And certainly if you're in the administration, you see everything that goes on with this president and how he needs to be handled. We've known this. And the people on the right, people on Fox or wherever, have we talk about uh, Biden at the the, the, uh, the Easter egg roll and how they the, the, Easter egg, the Easter bunny had to move him away. Right. That was three right. Easter's ago. Uh, do you remember when he was looking for the congresswoman who died? And so I just, is Jackie here? Jackie I thought Wilersky. she was, I thought, I thought, well, where was she? Oh, and people just brushed it off like, no, no, no. Listen, I mean, they really just uh, turned a blind eye to that. And so now part of me thinks, the cynical part of me thinks that the problem for them is not this, this concern about, uh, uh, ostensibly about his mental acuity no. or, or the belief that he seems so healthy until 8.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time two Thursdays ago, mm -hmm. but rather, yeah. oh, now the whole country has seen him fall flat on his face. Now we have to do this. And again, as you mentioned, it's not so much that he's not well and he's not well, but rather we can't have this guy losing. To, we need to switch him out. Like it's the end of uh, the Untouchables with the jury, and they're like, "Oh, you know, uh, Al Capone's going to go out and get off scot free. Better switch the jury." I'm you sorry, know? I don't know that movie reference. <laughs> Killing me, <laughs> Killing me. I will. More people have watched the Untouchables than. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. That's no, I'm, I know that's not true. I know that's not true. All right. Uh, <laughs> more of my people. The White House put out a statement, by the way, from uh, a doctor. The doctor at the White House. Uh, on why this other doctor visited the White House. And it sort of alleges, it's like, it does a lot of uh, throat clearing about like patient privacy is why we can't tell you who HIPAA. came yeah. and when. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's not, come yeah, we're not on. Supposed to know that. We all know who the patient is at the White House. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't need to hear about uh, KJP's checkup. We're not no. interested in that. No. We're interested in the president. Um, but he sort of just says like, a lot of people get treatment here from, here from a lot of doctors. It's like, really? Yeah. Really? That's the answer we're going with. He treats a lot of... Uh, Military members. Uh, he's important at Walter Reed. Like, it's it's non-responsive. That's right. Uh, much like the president. Uh. I feel, well, I mean, the that's true. <laughs> I I do feel that if you take a step back, what are we talking about here? This is a story about elder care. We've all been through this. Well, some of us have, and 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 and, and eventually, you know, at some point, we do have to deal with these questions, but. I used to think this is like the difficulty of taking away a parent's car keys because they can't drive, and I've never been in that position. And I would imagine it's humiliating to have that happen it's to you. I can, I can drive you, though they can't. No, what we're talking about here is having all the siblings, namely 15 cabinet members, right. uh, the children, having to unanimously agree that, you know, Dad, we need to put you in a home. And that's the situation that they are in Except for you cannot get all 15 to agree because that's this is the section four of the 25th Amendment. Mm -hmm. That's the only people. It's not members of Congress and obviously not going to be the opposition. It has to be the people who he appointed who have to then all agree to turn him in. Yeah. And that's just not, and it's it's a, it's not such an going extraordinary to measure. Like It is this, extraordinary. This is it's the never thing, been done. This is almost, it's very similar to the thing yeah. that, Democrats and our friends on the left and our anti-Trump friends who became Democrats uh, 
looked at the Republican Party and said, this is, you this guys is are spineless, why. you can't do this. It's a very similar thing where you have to take extraordinary measures against the person who is the standard bearer of your party. Yeah. And you have to all do it together and you have to jump off the cliff holding hands. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. And they can't figure out if they can do that. And the other part of this, which is, which is important, uh -huh. and Joe Biden referenced in the letter he wrote to the Hill, is that a bunch of people voted for him. Like in these sort of rigged. Oh, sure. Like it's sort of rigged primary. But he does note, like when it comes to uh, these ideas they have for doing a blitz primary in a couple of weeks where you have town there this is a real you thing can't being do suggested. This. i mean that yeah, they're gonna have like, town halls with celebrities uh like i believe oprah and bill clinton are among those oh come suggested. on you're gonna have a town hall you're gonna have a quick primary well there was again there was a chance for a primary uh -huh. the voters to the extent it was possible for them right. to speak spoke under those terms right and then you're going to tell me that a bunch of famous people and important people and elites mm -hmm. are going to overturn we'll that? We'll make that decision for you, or we will give you the choices. Right. Because they I want, just, we just want the person who's going to beat Trump, and we'll, we'll take care of that part. I just don't think it's feasible, uh, which is why I think probably the moral and uh, constitutional thing to do, which is probably not what will be done, is that he should step aside, give the presidency to Kamala, who would get you a she'd this. get a little bit of a boost from being the first woman president. Mm -hmm. Uh she'd get a lot of good press. Right. But he's not willing to do that. No, and, and that and that he, also does preserve like people sort of voted for this person. She they knew yeah. what they were getting. That's right. Uh. What does he say 14 <laughs> million? Good, I could be wrong. There's something like 14 million people 14 million. who voted in the primary so he keeps on bringing that number up. The fact is they did, but at this point in time you just again, you can't pull the switcheroo. It's like I knew Don, I knew at some point Bob Dole was going to lose to Bill Clinton in 1996. Right. Right. It, it, but it's not like the Republicans thought, quick, we better switch him out and put in Colin Powell. Right. You well, know, and this, this is another reason why people are freaking out, by the way. A Republican hasn't led consistently in summertime polls. Right. And hasn't been ahead yeah. post July 4th since the year of our Lord 2004, which is the year that I mm -hmm. arrived in this town. Yeah. It has been a long time. That's right. And so they're freaking out because this is not an experience that any of the left-leaning folks well, that we deal with have had in a long time. You know, what's interesting about uh, the late convention, normally you get that post-convention bump. If it's managed well and you end on a very positive note, Trump could get a po could, could very well get a bump after next week to make right. matters worse. Man, if, they, if he, can, get if he sure. and they can act normal all, yeah. for a week, yeah, yeah, just act. huge numbers, no, 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 huge not. numbers right. for normal. Right, right, right. So, and then, and then, the, and then the second thing is, uh, you know, hoping the Democrats hoping for a post convention bump at the, at the end of August, but in this situation, you, we want an open convention or something to that effect, and you're going to have all these people rioting and and, I mean, yeah, in Chicago, in they're Chicago, gonna do and I feel like. All the sort of the pro Hamas types, everyone has stopped doing this because they're like, what do we do? We don't know what to do. What what do we do next? Because well, like, and I, also, I, would, I don't know what to make of it. Also, Oprah ain't going to save you from right. the hordes in the street during the Chicago no, convention. It's, this, this is, it's ridiculous. Um, so. Here's speaking of freaking out under the microscope. Here's oh, I do. I do love some of the talking points now. They're like, how, how can I believe Anna Navarro said this? And how can a, how can a candidate? possibly survive under this kind of microscope oh really guys i'd like to i'd like to introduce you to one mitt romney yeah one john mccain one george w bush yeah george h w bush ronald reagan well do, have you noticed people it's gotten yeah. so crazy that there are people who will say oh, if only the media were like this to trump if only they were scrutinizing him the way they're scrutinizing Biden. I can't. They, I don't know if they actually have that device for men in black and they just give themselves amnesia. It's amazing. It's actually amazing. Okay. Here's Jill Biden uh, getting confronted by reporters oh, yes. while she's yeah. out and about. She says, says, why are you, why are you screaming at me? You know me. Don't scream at me. 
just let me talk. At which point she leaves and goes to her car. Right. As if you're going to say, Dr. Biden. By the way, did they say Dr. Biden? Is that what oh, they said? Oh, maybe that's why she's mad. Or did they, they I saw say, a tidbit yeah. today that I had never seen before when okay. we're talking about who's pulling the strings here and uh-huh. whether uh, Jill Biden could make an argument to her husband that he mm-hmm. should get out. That um, I'd never seen before uh, reported by someone at the Washington Examiner, I believe, that she had the Marine Corps band create a fanfare for the first lady. Fanfare, like fanfare for the common like, man. Like, fanfare no, like for the first her lady. It's her hail to the chief. Okay, it's um, the Marine Corps band was instructed last fall to come up with an entrance theme for the first lady, a source told the Washington Examiner. The band now has in its repertoire an original composition titled Fanfare for the First Lady. The song the source said is essentially Jill Biden's personal hail to the chief in that it is to be performed and repeated at official White House functions from her first appearance until she is ready to speak. Uh, uh, so I'm I'm not sure this woman's exiting the stage. No, not after. What, it, what Do you know what the melody is like? Is it the Imperial March <laughs> from Empire Strikes Back? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know that movie reference. Oh, no. You don't know that. You just don't <laughs> Which I apparently don't remember the pizza guy, so I don't know. Uh, um, yeah. That was uh, T. Beckett Adams who reported that. Ah, okay. Um, I had never seen that before, but that's why. No, I'm... that is very interesting. People would have had a field day if it was Melania Trump. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine? You had mentioned this in, uh, before, and you just mentioned it now, about the um, the best thing that Biden could do is to step aside now. Yeah. Because what happens is if he announces... I'm not going to run for re-election because I just don't have it in me. People are going to say, why don't you? And if you are not well six months from now, aren't you not well now? Right. right? Uh, and, 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 you know, the various things that people see, especially the hanging mouth and the blank stare. I mean, those are signs, I'm not saying for him, but for a lot of people, you you go on to, uh, you, you Google that and yes. you come up with conditions, Parkinson's, dementia or whatever. Um, the problem is... Uh, do you remember the governors who recently met at the White House? Pritzker, yes, and they Westmore. went face first into the tank. They and they they gave the thumbs up, and some of them on camera, most of them not, but they issued statements supporting um, President Biden. Uh, and Jonathan Martin at Politico uh, posited this, and I agree with him. They need Biden and Harris to remain the ticket and then lose, because a number of them are going to be uh, their tenure in office as governors it will come to an end in 2028. Yes, that's true. And that ruins the window for them if uh, Kamala decides that she wants to uh, uh, run again. Yes. Uh, and if she's running now West, as president, then Wes she- Moore's up there like, yes, no, I think absolutely. she's great. Yeah. Also, Kamala is great. Right. If she goes down uh, with the ship now as a vice president on the ticket, uh, it's easier for that open field in 2028, whereas if she's the nominee- but she has all this baggage and this legacy with this mixed legacy she has to deal with. Then, then they have to fight her in 2028. So that's a problem for them. Uh, there are a lot of problems. There are. Uh, I think it's interesting that the uh, Congressional Black Caucus, they had yes. a call where Biden showed up on the call. Mm-hmm. And it was largely laudatory. Nobody was really jumping at him yeah. in that call. Yeah. Uh, and that is interesting to me because obviously that's, that's a very important important part of the coalition, black voters. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to think that the Congressional uh, Black Caucus is uh, more of the elite Democratic Party mind mm-hmm. uh, than regular voters who have decided that he's mm-hmm. too old. Nonetheless, polls keep showing that Democrats largely are like, eh, he's probably the best we got at this point, um, that they recognize the downsides right. to, to opting out. But the Congressional Black caucus standing solid and strong behind right. him uh will matter to yes, democrats exactly. at large so it, it's not like oh we want to uh push him out for kamala harris because she's our first black vice president oh no no it turns out you know she doesn't rate that well with anyone no i mean again you look at the polls in california when she was running for president they she did not do well yeah across including, the board yeah, any any constituency with which you might assume she has yeah. natural affinity yeah. she doesn't she doesn't that is the that is the the superpower of right. Kamala Harris. She's like, doesn't touch any of the constituencies that she should, including the people of California or black voters or yeah. uh, Indian voters or no, Indian American voters. No, just so, acro- across the board. Um, I, I found this from Sarah Isker today. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun. Uh, the idea that all of this could, through, a, through various channels, end up throwing us into this situation. I'll just read a couple of the, the tweets. The next constitutional crisis 
Uh, the 12th Amendment says that the presidency goes to the person who wins the majority of electoral college votes out of the whole number available. In 2020, the Supreme Court upheld state laws that bind electoral college members to vote for the candidate that wins the popular vote in the state. Over half states have half the states have such a law, and half of those have penalties for noncompliance. If Joe Biden were to win the November election but become incapacitated in December, the electors in those states would still be legally obligated to vote for him. Other electors, though, would be free to vote for Harris or someone else. If nobody gets a majority of the Electoral College votes, the House decides among the top three vote-getters. Trump would be the top vote-getter at that point, and the House is very likely to remain under GOP control. The Dems would have to argue that for that these would have to argue that these faithless elector laws aren't actually binding in this situation, despite the plain text which make no exception for death or disability. If Biden were to win and become incapacitated, it would be chaos regardless. But have Dems realized it would it could result in Trump as being inaugurated as president with Harris as his vice president? So a um, result yes. that all of America deserves. Like I, no, that's very old school. It would be like Adams Jefferson or yeah. something to that effect. That's yeah. wild. Yeah, I'm your vice president now. Yeah. Oh, man. I just think we we all deserve that. <laughs> that's that's what our politics has I, brought us. You know, it's it's funny, Mary Catherine, because I think, you know, the media and Democrats, but really it's about the media, really gave Biden an out immediately after that debate. And that out was, if you bow out now, you will be regarded as one of the greatest presidents you know, more humility than since maybe Abraham Lincoln and with a policy record rivaling FDR. Here is the package no, they, for you. They would have made that yeah. happen for him, even yeah, though we obviously Truman, only, Truman did not seek reelection, you know, yeah. and, and, and we all love Truman. So, yeah, no, he he would have been set. Uh, fewer, fewer uh, things have been fumbled more badly than yeah. post yeah. that yeah. debate when you're right. He could have yeah. exited There's and they would have window. given him just the send off. Oh, my of gosh. All and send offs. Forget about immigration or Afghanistan or student debt loans or inflation. We'll just remember the good stuff. Yeah. And now that is dissipating. Well, if you're looking for how the turn comes, because I think yeah. it's going to, once once that letter went out, it looked like people were sort of coalescing. There's been, a, there have been leaked, uh, leaked quotes that say the dam is holding on support for him. Now, because we're recording this today, I could be wrong by tomorrow, but- I just want to you, note, Paul Krugman gives the model for how this goes, because oh he was saying, hey, yeah. hey, hey, this looks really bad. So I said what I thought needed saying about Biden, hating every minute as I did. One thing I won't do, however, is snipe at him if he chooses to stay in. Anyone who does that is, in effect, campaigning for Trump and doing so out of sheer pettiness. Yeah. So, uh you want to make sure that he's not partisan at all. He's just, you know, yeah, no, he's just straight down the line. Just yeah. uh, balls and strikes. Uh, <laughs> so that will be the model for everyone who's gone out on the limb and yes. said he needs to go. Including the New York Times editorial page. When they said that he mm -hmm. needed to go, they snuck in this line saying, don't get us wrong. If he is, we'll still support him. Well, how part of the press they support a can of soup is part know? of the press being mad that they that he didn't listen to them. Yes. When yeah. they, well, when they, they are the media. They said, we are giving you a chance right. to do what we say you should do. Right. And he decided not to do it. Right. So they're, uh, they're kind of mad It's the paper of record, the New York Times, you know, and, and, and to defy them. Well, that puts them in a bad spot and they'll all have to sheepishly come crawling back. No one's listening to you guys. Yeah. Um, well, we shall see. Uh, yes, we shall see. I, I, I Was there any, were there any other uh, some, big stories that I that are big are moments of, in this that I missed? I, I do think the intervention is interesting, but go I, ahead. Well, I do think that the the left has sort of fooled itself into thinking because like this this you can be blinkered by your own self regard. Yeah. Where it's like I am doing the honest thing. I am saving democracy. Right. I am doing this for the good of the country. All of my side only acts in those ways, and the other side only acts in evil ways. Right. And when you think that way, what you end up doing is just like massaging all of your bad behavior into right. honest behavior, trustworthy behavior, good behavior, while not noticing that voters have stopped like trusting you or thinking that your behavior is good. Yeah. They've talked their way through Russiagate. They've talked their way through uh, the Hunter Biden laptop. Right. All the COVID lies. Uh, and now this, where they really got caught with their hand in the cookie jar and- they don't 
realize, I don't think, how much it has eroded public trust. That being said, Trump could totally still lose uh, because people will be a little wary of him if he be acting crazy. But so maybe he will not. I'm going to let me throw this. Well, speaking of how he's going to be acting, particularly next week, uh, put you on the spot here. Uh, do you have any sense of uh, a guess on who do you think his running mate will be? Because the journal made a, a, a very um, interesting recommendation, which I agree with, which is at this point, you are now talking to the middle of America and the independents who don't know where to go. You don't need to galvanize the base. But what do you think? Um I sort of agree with that. You want to be courting voters like mm -hmm. me, actually, mm -hmm. right. is who you, I mean, not to make it all about me, um, but it is. Uh, I'm you the are like America. I'm the demo. Mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a center-right suburban mom. I'm a weirdo because I pay a lot of attention to politics, but I'm in the demo uh, that is wary of Trump, mm -hmm. but very dissatisfied with uh, Biden and also a Youngkin voter. That's like, it's, it's a profile. Uh, and um and I would say that a Bergam would be a better pick for me. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a Bergam Bergam partisan. I just like the guy. I think he's good. I think he's got a good record. I think he has yeah, high social IQ. I like yes. listening to him talk. But I think he gives off like I am very much not a crazy guy. I am a right. I am a successful normal guy who's from North Dakota. Um and I and he governed right, right. so. Trump ain't no spring chicken mm -hmm. himself. So if he had to hand the reins mm -hmm. to Burgum, I would feel OK about that. I don't mind the choice of Rubio at all, but I think they'd have to deal with this residency is that issue. All, is that, isn't that also 12th Amendment, I yeah. believe? So, and the, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say the, the, the only option there would be if Trump then decided to change his residency. And I mentioned this on uh, we mentioned this on the Hugh Hewitt show uh, to New Jersey. I mean, he, he stays in Bedminster a lot. He's got his place there. And, yeah, and I New guess I guess that play. could happen, but there, you're you're going to have to deal with court challenges yeah. that you wouldn't otherwise That's have right. to the deal with. The lawyers have enough to do. I think the the um, by the way, you notice I'm not really answering your question. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned one name. Oh, you mentioned two names, Mary Catherine, and those well, are two I'm, good I'm names. Dealing, I'm dealing and with Yunkin. the finalists. I'm dealing yeah, with yeah, the yeah. finalists. Of course, and uh, Rubio. Rubio, I think, would be great for speaking to Hispanic voters in particular. A fluent sure. Spanish speaker would be great yeah. to have. Yeah. Um, but I think you deal with that problem. Uh, then JD Vance. Not my cup of tea on policy. That would be the next generation of sort of turning toward yeah. populism. Yes. But I don't think that Trump cares about policy. I, right. So I don't think that's really like he doesn't want to have a policy legacy, even if his voters do. No, it's about. Um, but I do yeah. think that psychologically, J.D. Vance having turned away from the elites uh -huh. toward Trump yeah. when he had Hollywood making a movie about him with Glenn Close. In, yes. You know, that's he right. had the New York Times loving him. Obama loving him, mm -hmm. uh, every single network loving him, yeah. and academia to turn away from that and become a Trump guy, I just feel like that's got to mean something to Trump. Oh, well, I think the, uh, our other theory that we mentioned was that he also likes it's a, a one-syllable name, <laughs> Trump Vance. You know what? I, for, I keep forgetting that you said that, and that is very important because that's the way Trump talks. Sometimes, that, yeah, that's, uh, you know, the way it, has, that, it has a good ring to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I I hope I hope he doesn't I hope he picks Bergam. I think yeah. Youngkin would be amazing, crazy amazing. Um, we don't know, so we'll find out. But I I do oh. think that it's that middle base that he has to go after. Trump Bergam, you can't <laughs> Trump Bergam, you can't do it without all of you. No, no, no. Because there's so, so many yeah, users. Right. You Trump get it? Dog. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of use. Um, okay. Uh, anyway, I, well, my advice is like, keep it between the navigational beacons next week, uh, Republicans. Yeah. Like, you're riding high. Mm -hmm. We're having a nice mm -hmm. time. You're going into a convention ahead. Mm -hmm. Just, just be mm -hmm. normal. Right. It should be, you know, think about next week, Milwaukee, you know, Donald Trump, Republican National Convention, and Project 2025. <laughs> that's, that's the plan. Probably Interesting. The, how interesting. much of that? I keep on seeing it on social media where they list all the different things. Are they really all a part of that? Or do people add things to them? Because no, that, no what it's, it's actually going like, to like, I'm going to be forced to leave my current husband and marry a different husband that's in there specifically for me in Project 2025. That's how it works. Uh, I don't make the rules. Uh, no, we let's preview that we will discuss Project 2025 
the Chevron decision and the immunity decision. Yeah, presidential in immunity. Our next, in our, yeah, and there were some elections one. happening in, in, in the UK and that France. Too. It's uh, a lot going on, but, but I but think the, we can just the Project you know. 2025 thing is interesting mm-hmm. because that's going to be their big scare tactic from here on mm-hmm. out. While the Biden stuff is okay. happening, it is a Heritage Foundation uh, proposed plan yeah. for mm-hmm. the new administration. Trump, interestingly, very enthusiastically distanced mm-hmm. himself from mm-hmm. it uh, over the yes, weekend on did. Truth, saying, yeah. "I don't, I don't know what you guys are talking about with this thing." Right. At any rate, we'll get into it and those other Supreme Court uh, decisions. And international mm-hmm. order. Yeah. Um, but for now, just, oh, my gosh. Right. And we'll talk about Biden having stepped down and Kamala Harris is now the president of the United States. We'll talk about that next week <laughs> in the next episode. Um, OK. Uh, I was going to say we had a little bit of time. Can I ask you something? Novak Djokovic, you want to end on something kind of light? You oh, light, you sure. Kind of really yeah. Light. We no. had a okay. we had a clip of him, didn't did. we? Yes. Hold on. This was at Wimbledon. Mm-hmm. Right. Novak, who we've uh, supported in his decision to not get vaccinated and. uh Got earned many a earned earned almost as many banners and warnings on our podcast for yeah. it as he has majors. Yeah. Um, yes, that's right. So he's at Wimbledon, and he didn't like the way that he was being. It was a raucous crowd against his opponent, uh, in, in favor of his opponent, Holger right. Rune. So he has this to say because um, Novak, DGAF at this point when it comes to <laughs> comes to tennis overlords. And to all those people that uh, have chosen to disrespect the play, player, in this case me, have a good night. That is a reference to the name of his uh, opponent who yeah. they were Rune, screaming. Holger Rune from Denmark. Good night, good night. Very good night. Yeah. I- I'm hoping that they were just... Uh, commenting on Runa and that they weren't disrespecting you. I, they were, they were, they were. I don't accept it. No, no, no. I know they were. T- I know they were cheering for Rune, but that's an excuse to also boo. I, I, I listen. I, I've been, I've been on the tour for more than 20 years. So trust me, I know all the tricks. I know how it works. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. I focus on the respectful people. They have respect. That paid the ticket to come and watch tonight. And love tennis. And love tennis and appreciate the players and the effort that the players put in here. I played in much more hostile environment, trust me. You guys, you guys can't touch me. Good for him. I like it. Good for him. I like it. Crowds can get like that, I, I remember, uh, at Georgetown. You know, uh, sometimes uh, we often had uh, the opposing teams, there would always be like more fans of theirs than ours. Right. And we would try, you know, you'd start off with Hoya Sacks and at some point it becomes Hoya Suck. And it's like, wow, Aww. what's happening? They're hijacking it. You know, so. That anyway. never happens at UGA. So lucky. <laughs> also, before uh, after after we tape the show, I'm going to ask Mary Catherine, what is DG, DJAF? Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that. That wraps up this episode of Getting Hammered. Remember, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter at Victory Nomadis. Thank you for being with us. I am at MK Hammer on Twitter, at MK Hammer Time on Instagram. You can follow the show at Getting Hammered Podcast on Instagram and YouTube, and you should to see all this goodness. Uh, thank you for getting hammered responsibly. This has been a Nebulous Media Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>